Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, the Royal Cana Wedding Edition. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. It's the 21st of May. It's two days after the Royal Wedding and the anniversary of the beheading of Anne Boleyn. That's right. Oh, I don't want to talk now. <laughs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Gavin, the world is a Twitter. It's uh, uh, kind of startling to see the uh, factions responding to this wonderfully delivered uh, sermon addressed by uh, presiding Bishop Michael Curry. Um, and I think it's time that you and I talk about it. Uh, it was time, moments after I heard, imagine. And I, I got this John Lennon tune going in my, my mind. I go... If you're using John Lennon as a theological uh, prepotus for your uh, sermon, we need to talk about it. Now, normally I don't sit down here and invite people to critique sermons. Um, mm -hmm. It's just not part of it. What Anglican Script is about, it's, you know, it's not what we do. However, there's a wider context here. The wider context is a billion people watch this. A billion a people... Uh, unless the Anglican Communion corrects it and says this is not the gospel, assume this is the gospel. This is, you know, exactly uh, what Christ came to do. It's the exact words of uh, Martin Luther. Um, this is Huey Lewis in the news. This is John Lennon all wrapped into the gospel. And yeah, not really. So I thought I'd sit down with Gavin. You were one of the first people to, uh, to post a couple critiques and said, yeah, close, wonderful, great, charismatic, you know, uh, matic delivery, and wow, good stuff. Uh, and this is part of a bigger picture. You and I uh, have watched John, John, Justin Welby uh, work his magic, and as far as political strategy, this is the biggest fu Justin Welby could have ever delivered the uh, uh, Anglican Communion. In regards to who's in charge Kevin it I'd like to use the analogy of a wedding cake and so uh, there are two elements to the wedding cake we're going to talk about there's there's the the shape and the icing and there's the cake itself and everyone has agreed the shape and the icing were just fantastic mm -hmm. beautiful effective charming captivating uh, really wonderful what we're disagreeing about is what's in the middle of the cake the the, the first sign that the cake might not be very good for you was when I heard that Michael Curry had been chosen and invited to come because I thought, well, wait a minute. Uh, Justin Welby promised that uh, tech would be kept at some distance from the world affairs of the Anglican Communion. And even if this is a, a one-off event, which it is, nonetheless, the spirit of the agreement ought to be kept in place, and it wasn't. And the, the next thing I thought was, well, Michael Curry is going to stand for some things. He's, he's actually going to present a certain kind of Anglican Christianity. And what is the kind of Anglican Christianity Michael Curry stands for? And the answer is gay marriage, uh, transgenderism, and, and political correctness of, 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 of the whole spectrum. So Justin Welby had, if you like, picked a fight uh, and, and was using the royal wedding essentially to stage a kind of a, a, a PR exercise from his side of the political spectrum. Now, you might say, well, not many people knew that. You have to be uh, a, a real Anglican geek mm -hmm. uh, to know that. Um, but whether you're an Anglican geek or not, uh, there are 90 million Anglicans across the world. And for a long while, we've been involved in a very serious struggle about how to be faithful to God. Sadly, a kind of Anglican civil war. And this war, you know, the, the, Jesus said, be as, be as gentle as doves, but be as wise as serpents. The reason we're fighting this war is for Jesus' sake, not, not for a particular kind of atonement theology or a particular view of the scriptures, but because uh, every so often in human history, you get a serious outbreak of, of heresy. And the outbreak of heresy that we found in this particular royal wedding was Pelagianism and Arianism. These were things that our forebears suffered greatly to rebut. And so when we when we knew that Michael Curry was going to be uh, Welby's stalking horse, then it was perfectly clear that something important was going to happen. And then the next question was, what did the sermon say? 
Well, it's interesting, and, and we're kind of basing a lot of what we're talking about here in Second Peter 2. Uh, Second Peter 2 is a great uh, delve into the false gospel. The Listen, I need to let you know right now there are going to be false prophets and false teachers among you right now. And, you know, that's really uh, become true. Now, when a, a person from the 20th century, the 21st century, thinks of false gospels, they don't instantly think of Michael Curry. Uh, they don't think of Justin Welby. They don't think of uh, some of the great things they saw on television two days ago. They think of the, the Jim and Tammy Bakers, you know, all the, the scandals of Jimmy Swagger in the, in the 70s and 80s. Um, the Joe Olsteins, and you know, there, there's a different thought about what a false gospel is. False gospel is when they ask for my money. False gospel, <laughs> you know, and just like, uh, you know, and so it, it's hard because this was not uh, a classic uh, case of false gospel. This was more of the, you know, subtle way of saying, you know, he quoted Jesus. Well, you know, that's great. He quoted the, uh, the, the two great commandments, uh, but there's th this misuse of the context. And it, Kevin, I think, it, I think it was a classic case of the false okay, gospel. Sure. Um, I, 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 I think what you're, sure. say, what, you're, what you're saying is that not everyone knows a classic case when they see one. Okay, because <laughs> I, I, I saw it, I, I agree, because when I saw it, I said, boom, false gospel. Okay, so right. a lot of people are saying, look, for goodness sake, why don't you guys relax? Mm -hmm. You're so up yourselves. You know, this this wonderful man grabbed everyone's attention and with affection, enthusiasm and passion, he spoke about Jesus and the cross. How can you possibly be so pedantic as to pick his gospel, his, his sermon to get a life? Yeah, Gavin, I mean, what, I what are you doing, <laughs> Gavin? <laughs> I hear that. The, 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 reason why, the reason why we're looking at his, his text is because uh, it was a classic case of, of heresy and, and false teaching, anti-biblical teaching, let's say. So the, the first thing he began to say was, uh, if you're in love, you're in God. Now, this is a piece of poor liturgical practice by the Church of England and Anglicans, yeah. because in, in 1 John, in, in the letter, it's, it's agape. That's right. Now, when Harry and Meghan feel for each other, Agape is somewhere near the bottom of the list. <laughs> they they were feeling a certain amount of eros. They were feeling, you know, let's hope let's hope the storge develops the family love, uh, but it was romantic love and sexual love, mm -hmm. uh, and John has got nothing to do with that. So the first thing any preacher today in English, because English is a bad language theologically when it comes to love, is to say, as C.S. Lewis said, there are uh, in biblical Greek there are four loves, and and. What would most of us say in those circumstances? What we've said to, to most wedding couples is the truth. And that is, this romantic and sexual love is very exciting. It's really wonderful. It's so exciting you can't hear what I'm saying. That's right. But no. <laughs> if you can't hear what I'm saying, I'm going to have to tell you that it's going to run out. And I'm really sorry to tell you that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any agape for you if I didn't tell you that. And when it runs out, just like Jesus at the wedding in Cana, you're going to need to get some help. And the help you're going to need to get comes best from God. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to talk about uh, a sermon where you distinguish between the loves. And what Michael Curry did was just to say, if you have the hots for each other, God's involved. And that is so not true. <laughs> in fact, you know, as, we, as we know, falling in love with somebody, with anybody, can actually get way right in the way of your love for God because it becomes the most important thing in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, and, and the, the normal ways of serving God get put on the back burner. It's actually quite a, a, a dangerous piece of temporary madness, but it can be overcome and it can be subsumed into the love of God. So that was that was the first really, in a sexualized, over-eroticized, romanticized Hollywood culture, to simply affirm all of those heresies was a really serious um, mistake and, and, and a well, bad thing. I remember May 13th, 1989, probably about 1.30 in the afternoon, uh, Pastor uh, Dave Benson, a Missouri Synod Lutheran pastor, uh, addressed the wedding of Kevin and Jill, and he gave a sermon, and before my, my dear wife said, my dear wife-to-be said yes, he told her how bad it would get. He, he explained exactly the ups and downs of marriage. And I'm like, don't tell her. No, she hasn't said yes. What are you doing? Oh, no, it's all over. She thankfully said yes anyway. 
but there is a, a context of having great addresses to the the, the marriage before you um and i i agree with you that this missed the mark of what that was well you need to explain the different kind of loves that there are mm -hmm. uh the, the next thing he did was really very serious is the john lennon bit and and then he, he stood up and said and of course he said what everyone wants to hear sure you know, if we can only be nicer to each other, everything that's wrong in the world will be put right. There'll be an end of poverty. There'll be an end of aggression. Well, you had two seriously dysfunctional families there. We all have dysfunctional <laughs> families. If you belong to a dysfunctional family, you know that being nice doesn't cut it. We're screwed up because we're screwed up because we're screwed up and we need help. Uh, and so the, 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 the theology in this is, is Pelagianism. It's an old English heresy and it really says uh, what we need God for is patting us on the head as a kind of superstitious good luck charm because we can sort this out by trying harder. Now, Pelagius was a monk and he thought trying harder involved uh, prayer and good works. Um, and in our age, Michael Curry said trying harder is, 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 is just more love, more John Lennon, more, more Bonhomie. But so, we know. Oh, oh, I, I need to interrupt here. So John Lennon's love was not able to make Meghan Markle's father show up at the wedding, even though every time she talked about she, him, she talked about how much she loved him and how much. Well, and John's and yeah. nor has John Lennon's love helped Michael Curry not wreck the ACNA <laughs> and, take, and declare civil war on a whole load of faithful Orthodox pastors and churches. John Lennon's love, Michael Curry's love, Michael Curry's inclusiveness does not stretch to mm. other Anglicans who read the Bible differently from him. Mm. And, and, and in the end, he's perfectly entitled to take that view, but, but it's, it's never been taken in the history of the church. It's always been declared a misreading of scripture. And there was this moment when he said, oh, and by the way, love yourselves just a little bit. What well, you expect that from a, from a therapist, but actually, um, you know, Jesus spends a great, well, if you are gonna say that, you'd want to talk a little bit about what kind of love and what kind of self. You can make a case for saying that the aspects of self-love are necessary and self-acceptance, but you need to make a very clear distinction between the kind of, that kind of self-love and, and narcissistic, selfish egotism. Did he make that case? No, because he was playing to the gallery. They just loved to be told they could love themselves a little bit more too. And so the whole thing was a travesty of teaching. Now, the, the big thing that, that a lot of people have said is, well, look, he talked about Jesus. He made it look like Jesus and God mattered. Get off his case. Something really good must have happened. My experience is that it's much harder to bring people to Christ than, than, than simply using the right kind of sound bites or associations. And so I, I don't think that's a, I don't think they're right. Uh, I, I'm sure that people will say, hey, I've got a bit more time for Brack preachers. Uh, I've got a bit more time for for for, for um, splendid wedding sermons, but this won't bring people to repentance, to a change of life, to a, to a to a trusting God. Well, I think one of the important things I want to bring up here is uh, in Matthew seven, uh, when Jesus talks about false prophets, he wants to be sure you understand it's not just the words they're they're talking about right there, right before you, um, it's their whole life. Uh, he mm -hmm. says a bad uh, tree cannot bear good fruit can't be done and w when you look at the episcopal church as a whole you see the difficulty they have in bearing good fruit and well how dare tech how dare tech preach to the world on how to do good relationships i mean they can't even do good disagreement no, let can't. alone <laughs> it is it's so outrageous <laughs> it is and uh it says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit you know, it, it, you know, it talks about the whole part of the, the, the false teachers and the false prophets. It's not just the, the context and the words right before you, but when you look at the, 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 the life and the deceit and the power and the desire of these people, um, you, you can identify them rather quickly according to Jesus. So. And, and the next day, uh, Michael Curry and Justin Welby, as pleased as punch with themselves because they, they had succeeded beyond their wildest dreams, uh, and, and, and Justin Welby was standing up, and if one was going to be slightly snide, one would say he was, he was, his arm actions have got wider and, 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 and blacker in the last I think he months. had two cups of tea that morning. I just, you know. 
and he stood up in St Albans and 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 effectively uh, I'm trying to find polite words he copied Michael Curry's rhetoric and said you know if we love each other the need there never need be food banks in this country anymore if we love each other our children's mental health never need suffer anymore and you just thought what planet are you on yeah. the, 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 that's how... not exact okay um, Beatitudes does not say that I, I you know that is not the coming world yeah Nowhere lo- <laughs> but this is heresy 101 it yes. is it, I mean it, it, and you think to yourself how did these people get there uh, there must have been a time in his life when Justin Welby would have known that the Bible doesn't teach this kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, and I mean I've, I've said from time to time I, I have this kind of rule of thumb that uh, the, the, the more people lose touch with the with the scariness of the Holy Spirit, who who is not like magic, who, who who does what he wants, not what we want, and when he wants, and not when we want. It's a scary thing riding the bicycle of the Holy Spirit. Uh, re- you know, the balancing act is is requires a great deal of trust and some 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 skill. And I think people get fed up with waiting for God to act, and that's when they turn to the political and social realm and say, well, you know, I- I- if uh, if we can't see the turning round of lives miraculously. Let's make it happen politically, yeah. and then we can sleep at night, and it doesn't matter so much. I think that's what they're doing, but it's it's absolutely not what Jesus taught, and not what he died for. If I were Joe Olstein and I saw this, I'd be really upset because, you know, this is what he preaches, and people complain left and right in the the Orthodox world. Well, how come Bishop Curry gets to get away with it? Uh, you know, yeah. a billion people got to watch him. What was the collection like that day? You know, it's. It's one of those things, but uh, in respect, I think this is also a failure of catechesis. The average person, oh, is, when yeah. they when they uh, are baptized, confirmed, and and out of church, they can't understand and hear a false gospel. They don't understand what it, so they don't understand. This is the next. This is the next fascinating bit for me because mm-hmm. I really have been taken aback uh, by. Um, uh, by people's reactions. So I, I was sitting down two or three hours after the royal wedding, and I thought I'd just check to see what the press are saying. A- and the press were <laughs> swallowing the, the curry thing. Yeah, they really were. <laughs> and I thought, wait a moment. Um, you know, this wasn't Christianity. This wasn't the gospel. And and it's and it's being presented by the the patron of. Of, of, of gay marriage so I thought well I, you know all I can do is I'll write something that's all I can do is to say uh, why I thought it wasn't and then the interesting th- a, a number of people have written things I, I was astonished um, Kevin I, I get a couple of hundred people a day on my website and <laughs> the last two days I've had 45,000 yes, <laughs> <laughs> so, this has been very that's, good for Anglican <laughs> Inc I know I it's like <laughs> <laughs> going to lock myself in the cupboard. This is this is as scary as riding the bike of the Holy Spirit. Um, and what has surprised me most of all is is the anger that people I thought were orthodox, I thought knew the gospel and read the Bible fairly clear-headedly, uh, have expressed. And of course, what they're saying to us is, uh, "You horrible, anal, retentive, pedant, killjoys! Can you not just see that something lovely happened and relax and enjoy it?" And, and and we're saying to them, but but something dreadful happened. You know, the bride of Christ was bespoiled. The gospel message people died for uh, was 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 became a travesty. This you know, this really matters. This is this is not anal pedantry. Uh, this this is your beloved being slandered and traduced in the in the public place. So I, I've just been astonished at, at people that I thought really. I won't mention names. Make it <laughs> no, go ahead. We're taking names. No, <laughs> don't. <laughs> no, no. Pub- public figures, I thought, it could be relied on to tell the difference between Pelagianism and orthodoxy, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, who who are just really quite cross. But also at the same time, um, what I what I what I really liked was I, I had quite a lot of press of people saying, uh, you know, thank you for writing as you did because I I came away from the Michael Curry sermon knowing something was wrong. In fact, knowing something was badly wrong, and and, and a I couldn't put my finger on it, and b I beat myself up over being so horrible, because surely this was a feel-good sermon. Any nice person would feel good, and I, you know, so a number of people said, you know, thank you for articulating some of the issues. I now know why the the, the antennae of discernment in me were, were so deeply disturbed, and I now know that I was right to feel really very awkward about what was going on. 
Uh, so there are a whole load of people who've who've emerged with a keener sense that the truth matters, uh, that, that Pelagianism, uh, Arianism, demoting Jesus to a kind of feel-good therapy guru who, who blesses what you do, those are the two big distortions in, in the presentation, that they really matter. And, they, and, and the problem is they don't save people. Now, God can do anything. God, God can use Michael Curry on a bad day preaching heresy. He, yeah, he, uh, uh, God, I think God this, we, we need to make this point. God can overcome the failures of the sermon. He overcomes my failures every moment of every second of every day. That's not what this program is about. This program Absolutely. is about the, the education of those who say this is the gospel. This is you know, uh, exactly what the Anglican Communion wants people to know about Jesus Christ. Uh, and no, it's not. No, uh-uh. I, I, I find myself coming back to saying that the whole thing, you, you apply the repentance test. Um, the only way I can continue as a Christian is because God in his mercy has given me more time to repent. And every single day I take that time and I do my very best. And then what I can't do, he does, which is why I'm not a Pelagian. Uh, but, but if you hear... Uh, God being or Jesus being talked about in a way that doesn't involve the repentance, then this is not Jesus. This is not Yahweh. This is this is icing on a bad cake. And in that case, if people can't repent, they can't get saved. And if they can't get saved, they're in they we are in really serious trouble because judgment is no joke. I mean, Kevin, I once had a, I, one of the reasons I get fired up about this is one shouldn't talk about spiritual experiences. But I I once went through three nights when I had very vivid experiences of hell. And it scared the detritus out of me. <laughs> and one of the reasons I've come back to orthodoxy with a certain, with as much passion as Michael Curry has, is, is because hell is real and judgment is real, and we very, very, very badly need to be saved. Um, and how, how we present that, how we help people do that, uh, is, is a matter for individual vocation. But to have people standing up and say, you don't need to repent to be saved, that, that's that's a dreadful thing or that you can save yourself I, well you can save yourself. i mean that's the uh you know you love you're saved you love you're going to heaven you know and i just like we we, we really missed the ball on this now I, I well let's finish up here and talk about you know the goal here of justin welby you know, he knew what Michael Curry was going to preach because Michael Curry is a great preacher. I've heard Michael Curry preach dozens of times, and this is kind of his, his de facto, you know, one-off uh, thematic message, love. Uh, there's a brand new, you know... Uh, well, the uh, feeling of the feeling of love. The feeling of love, yeah. And, you know, this is like a grand marketing scheme. You know, this new website for the Episcopal Church. Uh, they're talking about all these, you know, a lot about climate change. But <laughs> there's all these new things. It's, it's like this grand scheme. And let's be honest, Justin Welby is planning for the next Lambeth. The next Lambeth cannot happen with African money, that's not enough. It has to have money. Uh, he doesn't have the money to do it. It has to have money from America. It has to have the Episcopal Church's money, especially if they're going to do the big blue tent again. And if you if you want the money, you put them up front so they're happy with themselves. They're happy with themselves, Gavin. They are. They're, they're, they've done wonderfully well. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that struck me as well, that I hadn't put two and two together, was... Um, I kept on asking myself, why has Meghan Markle been baptized? We have to assume the very best of motives and intentions. We must do that. Uh, and then shortly after her baptism, though she may have said it before and I didn't hear it, she said one of the things she intended to do after being married and a member of the royal family was to become an LGBT ambassador. Yeah. And I said to myself, now, if she's been prepared by the Archbishop of Canterbury to be a disciple of Christ, at what point did she tell him, I'm going to be an LGBT ambassador? And he said, no, dear, you have to repent. He, he clearly didn't. So that means that, 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 that either he didn't mention it or he said, you go, girl. You go, girl. <laughs> you be that proud and, feminist. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and she is going and she's going with his blessing. And this is a difficult thing. It, it is the awkwardness that to win his political battle and his theological battle, 
Justin Welby is doing one thing on the surface and another thing behind the scenes. Uh, I, I, I understand why, and uh, he intends to win. He, he needs to win. But it doesn't help the kingdom of heaven, uh, and, it, and it doesn't bring people to repentance and to a saving love of Christ. And it certainly doesn't, it doesn't defeat the devil, which is the other thing. You know, I turn to Christ, I renounce evil, uh, I repent of my sins, and I renounce evil. There's no renouncing of evil going on here. There is a placating of evil, an evil that is gnawing away at the heart of the church and has been led in through the back door and is unrestrained. My general rule when I go to church is I don't want to, uh, at the end of the sermon, feel good about myself. Uh, I want the uh, person doing the instruction, doing the, the, the preaching, to find places in my life through this teaching what I need to work on. And often is the case, prideful little Kevin is back there going, oh no, I thought I had that right. Yeah, and it does lead me to repentance. And, you know, that is the the daily, weekly, monthly, yearly uh, uh, reaction to my baptism of all. So that I, I'm off course, and I need to repent to get back on course. And uh, what time is it over there? Oh, it's quarter to five. <laughs> it's quarter to five. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We do need to finish up here. Uh, if anybody has any questions, can I give them your email address? <laughs> <laughs> I, now, what does interest me is you know, none of this controversy has made it to the BBCs or the Skies or uh, any of the networks yet. This is this is well, this is the voice of the Anglican Communion. The Church of England has spoken, and we now know that John Lennon is a saint. Huey Lewis is an Episcopal theologian. You know, it just like it goes on and on. Um, this controversy will never make it to the BBC or other places. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, a few people have picked it up. Uh, an Australian, one Australian new, newspaper in my case. Um, but but no, it doesn't. It doesn't play into the zeitgeist, into mm -hmm. the into the media's agenda, uh, unless it is to use us as examples of being, uh, I think someone said suck joy was one of the worst. Wow. <laughs> worst insults. <laughs> uh, you know, these, these, these bigoted, pedantic suck joys, um, then um, that, that's, that, that's the way it's been treated so far. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I would go with whiner, but suck joy, that's quite a quote. I'm Kevin <laughs> Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden, and you've been patiently listening, not to a Southern Baptist preach, but to a pedantic, bigoted suck joy <laughs> reflect on what we think are some important theological questions. And it's been episode 396 of Anglican Unscripted, and only three to go to the big 4-0. That really is exciting. Are you counting down? I'm, I haven't been counting down. I am. It's exciting. I know. I just, it's a big number. I've never it's done a, anything 400 times. I mean, wow. <laughs> I probably you know upset Mrs. Coulson four hundred times, I, you know. But other than that, four hundred records, <laughs> yeah. but, but, well, four hundred quality pieces. That, that's that's a, a great thing. Wow. You thought it was over? <laughs> no, it, 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 we're we're back because it's not over. I forgot to do the stuff in red. The stuff in red says like this episode. Gavin, you like this episode? You watched it, right? Well, I I didn't make. Too much of an idiot of myself, <laughs> Kevin. But I, but I liked what you did. I, I, oh, I, no, I like I what you like did. This. You're, so the, you you're the best. <laughs> you I'm need, than you. <laughs> you need to share this episode. Um, I know you're going to comment on this episode. More and more people are going to the YouTube part of the the channel here and commenting on what we're doing, which is great. We look at you it all the time. You know, you could certainly make or lose a few more friends by, right. by sharing this one. Yes. And, <laughs> and you won't know which in advance in my experience. <laughs> and if you want to know when these pedantic suck joys are going to put out another episode, you click subscribe. You just is right there, that little red button on YouTube, subscribe.